Lamis and the other hunters have successfully defeated the frog monster and are currently on their way back to the village. There were no strange occurrences during their journey home, but as they approach the village, they notice a lot of smoke coming from that direction. It seems they can't relax just yet. Lamis becomes very worried about Manyami and the innkeeper in the village. Trying to reassure her, Bakso attempts to say something to calm her down. Fortunately, Lamis can more or less understand him, and she becomes calmer. Upon reaching the village, they find signs that something has been dragged through the village. The first place Lamis heads to is the inn. The inn building is now completely destroyed, and there is no response when Lamis calls out. If not calm down again, Lamis might insist on entering the ruined building. Finally, Boxo tries to stop Lamis with his limited language skills. After thinking calmly, Lamis is convinced that Manyami and the innkeeper have taken refuge elsewhere. Most likely, they sought safety at the Hunter Association. When they arrive at the Hunter Association, they find the corpse of a giant two-headed snake. The snake was defeated using formidable weapons available in the village, which is not surprising since the village is built within a dungeon. Naturally, they would have such defenses. Lamis approaches the guards, Karyos, and Gorge to inquire about Manyami and the innkeeper. Thankfully, they have sought refuge within the Hunter Association. Despite only having lived here for a few weeks, Boxo already feels attached to the villagers. He feels this way because he has experienced death. Therefore, today Boxo decides to treat all the villagers with his products. On that night, they all feast on the two-headed snake they defeated. Apparently, the snake is a natural enemy of the frog monster. Many newcomers also want to try Boxo's products while they are free. The most favorite products are alcohol, potato chips, and odin. After that, a drunken Lamis approaches Boxo. Although slightly incoherent, Lamis expresses her joy at seeing everyone still alive. She is also happy to see many people gathered around Boxo. Lamis feels that Boxo has become an important part of the village. Boxo is truly amazed to hear Lamis thinking of him that way. Gradually, Lamis falls asleep after saying all that. The next day, the villagers are busy renovating the destroyed buildings. Many hunters and carpenters are guarding the village. Boxo anticipated this, so he prepared suitable food products for them. Meanwhile, Lamis is summoned by Director Bear. Boxo hopes that Director Bear will recognize him as a valuable hunter after yesterday's mission. However, when Lamis returns and recounts her conversation with Director Bear, it turns out she was only asked to help clear the rubble from the buildings. Indeed, Lamis's formidable strength is well suited for that task. Even hunters from other dungeon levels who have just arrived in the village are amazed to see a girl with such power. Unfortunately, during her hunter missions, Lamis often makes mistakes and is seen as a burden because of her strength. Afterward, Lamis runs into Kirill. After some small talk, Kirill invites Lamis to join their group. Not just her, but Boxo as well. However, Lamis immediately declines without much thought. Other hunters from different levels wonder why Lamis rejected the offer to join the Foolish People's crew. After all, the group is quite famous among hunters. Innocently, Lamis answers that her current priority is to help renovate the village. Sometime later, Boxo encountered two unfamiliar faces. Coincidentally, Lamis had just arrived to meet Boxo. The two strangers introduced themselves. The woman wearing glasses was a Kaui, and the man behind her was Doc Guy. They came as representatives of the exchange house. They had come here because they received reports that this dungeon level was running short of silver coins. Lamis immediately candidly revealed that a lot of their silver coins had been spent on buying Boxo's products. Akawi made an offer to exchange Boxo's silver coins for the gold coins they brought. However, Boxo couldn't do it. Not because he refused, but because he didn't have the functionality for such an exchange. However, Lamis had an idea which was to buy Boxo's products with gold coins to get back silver coins as change. Lamis's idea worked, and Akawi got the silver coin she needed. From behind them, a hunter who wanted to steal from Boxo saw Akawi and Doc Guy carrying a lot of coins. He seemed to be planning something malicious. After that, Akawi and Doc Guy bid farewell, stating they would return in a few days. To attract more buyers, 
Boxo added a new feature, which was a digital lottery function. With each purchase, there would be a random number drawing. If all three digits of the number matched, the buyer would receive one product for free. Since adding this feature, Boxo's sales increased by 30%. One villager who became addicted to the lottery was an old man. His wife had to fetch him to stop his gambling habit. Not long after, Director Bear came to invite Lamis and Boxo to discuss something at the Hunter Association. First, Director Bear wanted to thank them for all their help during the previous mission. Then, he wanted to discuss something with Boxo that Lamis shouldn't hear. Looking slightly confused, Lamis waited for them to finish talking on the lower floor. According to Director Bear, there is a high possibility of migration to this village. However, population growth always brings problems. Director Bear's current concern was about hygiene issues. As a bear species, he stated that they only mate during mating season. However, it is different for humans who do it almost any time. As a result, diseases often spread and hinder development efforts. After hearing Director Bear's concerns, Boxo understood why Lamis was asked to leave the room. Then, Director Bear called his assistant, Shirley, who would be responsible for handling this issue. The initial idea was to tighten regulations regarding hygiene, but he realized that it would create other problems. Boxo already knew the solution to this problem. He changed his form and provided condom products to them. At first, they didn't understand what the object was for, but fortunately, there was a picture inside the package explaining its use. Shirley became convinced that it could prevent diseases. She decided to buy a large quantity and distribute them to the people in entertainment places. One afternoon, Swurry, the girl whom Lamis had saved before, approached Boxo again. Swurry had always been mischievous, but Boxo let it slide. When Swurry's pranks failed, her bodyguard would take care of her as usual. Shortly after, Swurry returned with a gloomy face, mumbling that her father didn't come home today despite promising to do so. When she faced Boxo, she was puzzled as a drink suddenly came out without her inserting any coins. Unlike before, Swurry thanked Boxo for this. Later, during the evenings, Lamis would occasionally take Boxo to the lobby where the bath was located. There, Boxo would change the products according to the needs for bathing like underwear, shampoo, and others. However, the most popular item after taking a hot bath was flavored fruit or coffee milk. As usual, the elderly lottery addict was trying his luck again. This time, he brought his granddaughter, May, along to buy something. He also introduced her to the lottery system. According to the old man, if you win it, you'll be happy for a whole day. May bought a bottle of mineral water and tried her luck. At first, the first two digits showed the same number, and usually the old man failed at this point. The last digit was always the most difficult. However, unexpectedly, this time the last digit also matched. The old man couldn't believe that his granddaughter won on her first try. As May won the lottery, she chose another bottle of mineral water for free and gave it to her grandfather. He regretted that it was already evening, so the happiness wouldn't last long. Still, May was content for this day as she could spend time with her grandfather and grandmother. The old man was deeply moved hearing his granddaughter say that. The next day, Chief Bear inquired about the truth of Boxo's mimicry skill. As rumored, Boxo indeed possessed such a skill. Chief Bear wanted to ask Boxo to use that skill for something specific. He wanted Boxo to hide in a crime-prone area and identify the criminals. Before that, Chief Bear wanted to test the effectiveness of Boxo's mimicry skill. Boxo was placed in front of the Hunter Association building. Normally, Boxo would be easily visible without using the mimicry skill. Yet, Lamies was already making a fuss, searching for Boxo's whereabouts. Munimi informed her that Boxo was busy with Chief Bear, so Lamy stopped looking and resumed helping with the renovation. Until the evening, Boxo managed to go unnoticed by anyone. Both Lamies and Swari were frustrated as they hadn't met Boxo at all that day, unaware that Boxo was actually right in front of them. They started talking about Boxo. It seemed that for a few days now, Swari had been wanting to buy Boxo from Lamies at a high price. However, Lamies didn't agree. She said that Boxo was never hers to begin with. Swari was still curious about what was inside Boxo. 
He clearly wasn't an ordinary magical tool, but Lamy's herself didn't know for sure. All they knew was that Boxo understood what they said and answered their questions. Lamy speculated that Boxo might be a human. Boxo himself hadn't expected to hear that answer. After Swari left, Boxo suddenly released the mimicry skill, surprising Lamy's. As usual, Lamy's wanted to share everything that had happened during the day with Boxo.